Uh, you had asked about uh, chapter 3, uh, problem 52, which is on page 112. So in this problem, we know uh, mean demand, and that's our x-axis, is 400. We do not know standard deviation. We're solving for it in part A. And, but we do know that um, the probability that demand will be between 350 to 450 is 0 0.85 or 85 percent. That means that these two areas combined is 15 percent or 0 0.075, 0 0.075. That means that from this point all the way to the left tail of the normal d curve, uh, we will have the 85% here and the 0.075%, which summation of the two of those would be 0 0.925. So now uh, we must go to uh, the normal curve and I have uh, one here for you. Um, and uh, 0.925 uh, will be right over here. So um, I should have made this bigger. I, I apologize. Maybe you can zoom in. Um, so you will go and you will read uh, the um, the z value for it, maybe I should highlight, um, the z value for it is right here and right here and you can see that at the intersection you will uh, you will have you have 1.4 and then at the top you have 0.04 so we have 1.44 as the z value. So on the z axis of course, we know the mean has a z value of 0, but we just found for this positive tail end, we found 1.44 as the z value. Now, z value is equal to x minus mu over sigma. Um, in this case, we know the 1.44. Uh, we do know x is 450, this value right here. We do know mu is 400 right here, but we don't know standard deviation. So 1.44 is uh, cross multiply. So 1.44 sigma, let me erase that. 1.44 sigma is equal to 450 minus 400. This is how you cross multiply. So 450 minus 400 is 50. So sigma is 50 over 1.44, which is 34.7. So we found um, <coughs> sigma to be 34.7. Now we use that information in our next uh, problem, part B. In part B, we're still working with the same um, variable, same um, item. Uh, so we know demand on the x-axis is 400. Um, and um, we, we know that um, marginal loss is $10 and marginal profit is $15 um, selling price minus the $10 cost, which is $5. So we compute the P-critical. P-critical is computed as ML over ML plus MP, which is 10 over 10 plus 5, which is 15, which is 0 0.667. Now, what is uh, critical P? Uh, this critical P, well, essentially we're looking for a quantity along this axis here, right here. Okay, that we want, that, that, that quantity is the best quantity that we should order or that we should stock. And we're trying to look for it. We have to decide, is it greater than the mean or is it lower than the mean? Will it be at this end 
or will it be at this end of um, the distribution? So um, let me erase all that because I made a mess of it. Um, so uh, we go back to our knowledge of the normal curve. But well, before I do that, let me uh, define what this uh, P star is. This P star or critical P is a probability that um, dema demand will be greater than or equal to our optimum quantity. So, um, so um, this optimum quantity right here that we, we are trying to find, um, if it's over here, then probability the demand will be greater than it should be 0.667. Probability great that demand will be greater than that would be 0.667. Well, this area is too small to be 0 0.667 because from our knowledge of the normal curve, we know that half of the curve um, this right half is 0 0.5 and this left half is 0 0.5. So um, our optimum quantity that we're looking for, Q star, um, cannot be um, cannot be greater than the mean, cannot be here. It cannot be here. So it has to be somewhere to the left of the mean so that, um, let me erase this, uh, so that uh, all of this area can be 0 0.667 And uh, the way that is, is this right half will be 0.5 and this um, segment right here, which is yellow to the left of the mean, uh, would be 0 0.16. So this would be 0, oh, I'm sorry, 0 0.167, 167. And this is 0 0.5 and combined, it'll make the 0 0.667. So, um, so I know my um, Z value for my optimum quantity. This right here will be my optimum quantity that I'm looking for. Um, it's going to have a negative Z value. So I will erase this now. So I will have room for um, the rest of it. Okay. So um, my Q star will be somewhere over here to the left of the mean and the Z value for it I know is going to be a negative number because um, Z value for the mean is always zero so everything to the left of it will have a negative Z value. So we need to go to the um, normal curve that's, uh, I'm sorry, normal table that's in your book and I will erase all this other stuff that we had. Oops. Um, that I had on it, okay, from part A. Okay, so um, you will see that the normal curve in your book, um, at the very end of your book, uh, only lists um, cumulative probabilities. So it lists probabilities um, uh, for zero, for, for, I'm sorry, for, um, mean and greater than the mean. So, so all the way area from the left tail all the way, um, higher than the mean. Uh, and we know that because you see the probabilities start at 0.5 and then they gradually get bigger as you go through the table. So, 
this means that um, what I must do is use my knowledge of the normal curve to use the table. So if I'm looking for a negative z value here, and I know uh, the area to the right of it is 0 0.667, that means this area to the left of it is 0 0.333. But because my table does not have negative z values, I can use that same table um, and use the positive z values of it to arrive at my answer. So if I come over here and I say, okay, this area is 0 0.333, I can lose, that means from here to here would be 0 0.667. So if I look through here in this table right here and find 0 0.667, which this number comes as close to it as possible, then I can read the z value associated with that. And uh, that number would be over here and over here. And I see 0.4 plus 0.03, which gives me 0 0.43. So this z value that I looked up, the positive z value that I looked up, is is positive 0.43. So the corollary to it, or the uh, opposite end of it, um, is going to be negative 0.43. There. So I'm using the knowledge that the normal curve is symmetrical uh, and um, it's it's symmetrical and a mirror image of itself if I fold it in half. I'm using that knowledge to solve this problem. Okay, so um, I will come over here and I will finish out the problem. So again, remember z is equal to x minus mu over sigma. So I found my z value to be negative 0 0.43. That would be right here, 0 0.43 which is associated with uh, my uh, optimum quantity. So I'm using that to solve for my optimum quantity. So zero, negative 0 0.43 is equal to my optimum quantity. It's a very small area to work with. Q star, or my optimum quantity, minus the 400 divided by 30, um, th what was my, 34.7, which is my sigma, 34.7. So um, that means Q star minus 400 is equal to um, negative, uh, let me do this over here. Um, so we, we have um, Q star minus 400 is equal to um, negative 0.43 times 34.7. So Q star is, if I take this negative 400 to the other side, it becomes positive. So I get 400 minus 0.43 times 34.7. And Q star therefore becomes 385.1. I hope you found this helpful.